Podcast. Presented by XFL2K.com. With your host, Tron Hawkins. Holy crap, I got a new opening for Christmas. Thank you, NFL2K.com, um, for that wonderful intro. Uh, I feel like I'm on Major League Podcast now. Um, it's Christmas Day, so Merry Christmas to everybody. And uh, go check out NFL2K.com, where I am the podcast on there. Uh, one of the many podcasts on there. There's a few of us. Um, but uh, I am now on NFL2K.com. I am also on YouTube. You can um, find that on NFL2K's uh, YouTube page. I'm also on Apple, Google, all the places you can get podcasts at. Uh, thank you, everybody, for the support. Um, I'm over 230 listens combined through the five episodes. I know that seems like a lot, but it means a lot to me since I'm just a guy on a phone recording podcasts. Um, so it's it's a big deal for me. Thank you for everybody for the support. Thanks for the views I've been getting on Twitter, on the, on the um, app on the uh, podcast apps and um, on Facebook and everything. It means a lot to me. Thank you for the follows. Thank you for the likes. It, it means a lot to me. Merry Christmas to all y'all. I hope you had a great holiday season. No matter what holiday you celebrated, or even if you didn't celebrate one, just um, just happy holidays to everybody. So today, I am talking about what I would do doing an expansion. Like where would I put teams? What stadiums would I put them in? I had one main criteria and I liked what uh, XFL did when they picked these stadiums. I picked MLS stadiums because I feel like if they want to get in that twenty thousand dollar or twenty thousand people range, excuse me, um, I feel like MLS stadiums is the place to go because most of them can hold in the you know later teens, like seventeen, eighteen thousand, on up to you know twenty two, twenty three thousand. So that's the main thing I was looking for. Believe it or not, um, was MLS stadiums. I wanted to pick out MLS stadiums um, that I would think would be a good spot for the XFL. I'm going to put two teams in the West, two teams in the East. That would give us 12 teams. You'd play a division twice, so that's 12 games. I know 10 games, and then play the other division once. So that would be a 16-game season is what I'm what it would be. Um, so it would be kind of like an NFL season, but you can still do – Four and four. That's what I would do still. Um, so, the first place I picked is, Jimbo, please. Okay, that ain't one. Um, Providence. Uh, no, I'm sorry, not Providence. Portland at Providence Park. Uh, Providence Park is uh, in Portland, Oregon. Um, it is a old stadium, believe it or not. It, uh, it's been around since the late 1800s. It was a complete stadium, though, in 1926. It is home of the Portland um, Timberlands. The most important note here, though, is that Portland State Vikings, a college football team, uses the stadium during football season, so it can be transformed into a football stadium. So that's that's a big deal to me, and that's what kind of sold me on it. Um, and plus, football in the football out in the you know Western United States, uh, especially up that way, like Seattle and stuff, um, is getting kind of bigger. And plus, Seattle and Portland can be a feud. It uh, could be a rivalry in the XFL, the new XFL. Um, I think it's a good stadium. It holds, let me see here. Um, 25, sorry, I've been doing some research on this for the last week or so. Christmas kind of threw me off and everything. It will hold 25,000 capacity. Um, they held um, you've had the MLS All-Star game there. Um... And the stadium capacity will be expanded to four thousand new seats over the next over the, within the next years. So I mean, it could hold. That's twenty five thousand is going to be when it's done. Um, it's held uh, minor league all star games, MLS all star games. Uh, it's been used for baseball, football, and soccer. So that's a you know that's a big deal. Um, I think it'd be a good stadium. I think it'd be a good stadium for the XFL. Again, I want to look at smaller stadiums, um, but we know they can turn it into football. Um, Like I said, they've held um, many uh, many of the uh, Portland State games there, so we know it can be done. Um, and I think it's a good idea. I think I think Oregon. The only team Oregon has is the Ducks, um, and that's not really you know it's college Oregon and Oregon State, but Oregon gets more love, so that's like the main team up there. They don't have any pro teams other than 
basketball with the Trailblazers. So I think it'd be, I think it'd be a good thing to have an XFL team there. Um, again, at some point they're gonna have to expand into markets that don't have a team. That's gonna be the only way that they can really expand. Or that they don't already have an NFL team. Like they kind of did St. Louis, you know, in San Diego. I want to put San Diego on there. I do. But as long as the AAF's there, the XFL's not going to go in there. Um, so I think that for now, they need to go into these smaller stadiums and uh, in some cities that don't have football when they expand. Granted, like I said on Twitter, I have two cities that do have a pro uh, NFL team and two that don't. So the next one in the West will be a team that has a pro team and it is the city is home to one of the loudest stadiums in the nfl if not the loudest i know seattle's already got a team that's what you're thinking it's kansas kansas city um you know the chiefs is big there there you love their chiefs there um obviously especially this year they have a great team with patrick mahomes patrick mahomes thank you um for winning me the fantasy championship, I'll thank my girlfriend as well. For get me a signed Patrick Mahomes jersey uh, for Christmas, probably one of the best gifts uh, I ever had. Um, they have a they have an MLS uh, MLS team in uh, Kansas City. Um, this is actually in Kansas City, Kansas though. It's not Kansas City, Missouri, but it's close enough where I think Chiefs fans would travel. Um, The soccer team, MLS team, played at Arrowhead Stadium again with, and then now they're here. Um, they hosted a, another stadium that hosted, hosted the MLS All Star Game. Um, they also hosted the men's United States soccer team and the MLS Cup. So three of the biggest things in United States soccer, um, they held and they held in the same year. So you know it's a it's a good stadium. Again, it's Children's Mercy Park um, in Kansas City, Kansas, right on the border of Kansas City, Missouri. Of course, um, it can hold up to twenty five thousand people for concerts and stuff. So you're looking at about twenty one thousand probably for football. Yeah, it's never had a football game there. But Glow Life Park can do it. I think I think Children's Mercy Park can. Um, again, football is big in Kansas City, obviously. Um, the record for attendance there was 21,175 for the MLS All-Star Game in 2013. Um, so, again, 21,000 is that range. I think if XFL could stay in that $20,000 range, or 20,000 people attending, um, I think it would be successful. The reason why I picked MLS Soccer Stadium for this, though, is because it's going to look better on TV. That's why I mentioned in the Venues podcast that I feel like if... You know, Audi Field, which to me is number, was number one, and um, even Globe Life Park, even though it's a baseball stadium, and um, StubHub Center, that's going to look better on TV because they all hold about 25000 or less. Where MetLife and Century League Field is going to look weird only having about 20,000 people in an 80,000 seat stadium. So that's why I kind of wanted to go after soccer stadiums because I feel like it would look better on TV, you know, and it's a whole lot better going where at a sold out or you know, stadium than hey, we got twenty thousand people here in New York at MetLife. I mean that's not even a third of the way full um at MetLife. So I feel like if they can just stick to soccer stadiums later on in expansion or even smaller college football stadiums, it would look better on T V and make it feel like a bigger thing when it's jam packed and the and the stadium's rocking. So my two West teams that would join Seattle, St. Louis, Houston, I'm sorry, Seattle, L.A., Houston, and Dallas would be Kansas City and Portland. Um, I can see Kansas City just feuding, you know, being with everybody against everybody in the West there. Um, but yeah, Portland and Seattle would be a good little neighbor rivalry. Um, I I think that's the two cities they should expand to. But, like I said, because they have smaller stadiums and football hungry. Kansas City's football hungry because they love the Chiefs. Portland's football hungry because Oregon really don't have a team. Um, so let's go to the east side. And, uh, you know, already in the east you have St. Louis, Tampa Bay, D.C., and New York. So you already got some building robberies there, which I will be talking about come um, in two episodes when I'm talking about the 2020 week one, what I would do 
to schedule it. Like what would be the schedule I put out for week one? Um, so the the the, the non football city in the East. That what I would do, and I seen a lot of people on Twitter going, "Hey, we want an XFL team here," um, you know, and, and and even when I mentioned this, even when I mentioned this podcast, they're like, "Hey, we we want an XFL team here," and I agreed, and it is Columbus, Ohio. Um, they have a big football culture there, thanks to Ohio State. Ohio State, to me. If you notice, Ohio State's more popular in Ohio than the Browns and Bengals. Um, some people would argue that they hadn't had a pro team in Cincinnati since, you know, the 90s when the Bengals was good. So, I think Columbus, Ohio would be perfect. You got those college kids coming. That's what I talk about in my venue, uh, venue um, episode as well. You got these kids from Houston, the college, coming over there. Do like a student night. Get them rowdy. Get them drunk. Um, if they're of age. And get them, get them in the stadium, get them rowdy, get them ready to go, and say, "Hey, you know, dollar, dollar student night or something." We have student ID. Get them in there, get them rocking. Um, I think the same thing could happen here um, in Columbus. It's at uh, Mafray Stadium. Uh, it's spelled M A P A F R E, uh, which is weird. Um, it's it's the first. It was the first soccer specific stadium built by ma- by a major league soccer team. Um, but I don't think that means anything because so was StubHub Center, and now it's hosting the Chargers. So was Audi, and now it's hosting the XFL. Um, this stadium is right um, right in Columbus, downtown. Um, it can hold capacity for concerts, 25 to 30,000. So for football, probably around that 20, 21,000 range, which is what I'm looking for. Like I said, when I was looking at how I would do it, this expansion, I look for soccer stadiums that can field up, hit that mark that Oliver Luck was talking about on many podcasts, talking about, hey, we want to hit 20,000. 20,000 is our is our is what we want our average to be. He said some will be more, obviously, um, but 20,000 is the spot. If they can just stick to stadiums that they know they can fill 20,000 with, then I think they can go, okay, we'll sell it out. We hit our mark here. Next city, how many do we have? Um, let's see here. They've held, they've only held soccer and rugby there, but that don't mean anything. Um, actually, I take that back. The venue is also a regular shop for Ohio State School Athletic Association State Championship Tournaments in both football and American football and soccer. Um, so, and in the local Columbus area, it is a site for the annual Westerville Football Classic. So, it it can be changing the football. Um, it's it's a nice stadium. It's in a nice football-hungry town. If you can get kids there, like I said, if you can get, get the people from Ohio State to come, and just people in general that just love football, which Ohio is a pretty good football state, Ohio State, Cincinnati, Cleveland, uh, Cincinnati is actually on my list, uh, maybe for expansion team, but I think Columbus. There's always been rumblings that people from Columbus want a pro team there, especially on XFL. There's even pages called XFL Columbus, so bring XF- XFL to Columbus. I think it's a perfect match. It would probably be, I, it should be the first city. It should be the first city um, that gets an expansion team. I will rank these like what I think is most likely here in a minute. Um, but this stadium is nice. The area is nice. If you can get foot Ohio State fans there, then I think it'd be rowdy. It'd be a good spot. Um, and like I said, it hits that nineteen thousand to twenty thousand range. They're kind of looking for. If I was XFL, I would put Columbus on the on the list. Um, it's a great, you know, great football town. And uh, I think I think college towns should be the next thing they go after, after when they expand, if they ever expand, which if they make money, they will, because um, they want the XFL to be pretty big, give more people chances. I mean, think about how many uh, you know Ohio State quarterbacks go on and not really do anything in the NFL. Now imagine if that one of those quarterbacks come home to Columbus, um, and do good for XFL team. They can fill up that stadium if they have Ohio State quarterback in that quarterbacks you know football is a quarterback game they can get one of them 
former Ohio State quarterbacks that kind of lost their luster and didn't make it in the NFL to come play there, they would they would fill it up no problem. So the last team in my four team expansion, it's a team that had an XFL, XFL team before, and I'm amazed they didn't put one there again because they're going to all these big cities. They had like eight huge cities named. And everybody's like, wow, I'm amazed this place didn't get one. They would in the expansion. I guarantee you they would. I would bet money that they would. And that's Chicago. Um, they have a new stadium name. It's SeatGeek Stadium. Um, it used to be the Toyota Stadium, but now it's SeatGeek, Toyota Park at SeatGeek Stadium. It is right outside of Chicago, uh, about 12 miles southwest of downtown Chicago. It's in Bridgeview, Illinois. Um... The stadium, like I said, is SeatGeek Stadium, Toyota Park at SeatGeek Stadium. Um, it capacity for soccer is twenty thousand, for concerts is twenty eight. So I think for football, you'd probably look about twenty twenty one thousand, which again is right in that range I was looking for. Um, it has held, you know, major U.S. soccer games, and that's really about it. And rugby. Um, they and it holds college soccer matches. They've had concerts there like Dave Matthews, Kelly Clarkson, Corn, Jimmy Buffett. Um, so they never had football there. But like I said before, they can get football in the StubHub Center. If they can get football at Audi Field. I think they can get football here. It's Chicago. Vince loves Chicago, LA, and New York. It's one of the only ones of the big three that didn't get one. So you can bet your ass if they expand that Vince is going to go. Um, to Chicago. There's, there's there's no way about it. Chicago is just a, a, a place for him that he loves. That's why Chicago, LA, New York, always just the big wrestling events. Um, and I, you know, you know, he went there before. Soldier Field, it's old stadium. You know, it's huge. It, it kind of suffered what I said that MetLife's going to suffer from. It was just too big for the XFL then. It set too many people. Um, but Chicago loves their football. The Bears. Um, so if you get twenty thousand people in that stadium it's gonna be rocking and ready to go for some XFL. Now the rank you know, the possible expansion, the rank war I think would happen, like most likely it would be Chicago one, um, Kansas City two. Mm, Chicago, Kansas City, Columbus and Portland. Um Portland, you know, it's a small not a small city, don't get me wrong, but it's a smaller probably of the of the of the it, for sure, more than Kansas City and Chicago, um, Columbus and Portland's a flip. You know, it's a coin flip. But Ohio, I think Ohio State would fans would support Ohio XFL team if it was in Columbus. Portland though would be kind of iffy since they never had a pro football team there. Um, I think people would come out there just for curiosity factor. But it's the smallest, not the smallest market of the four, but the least football hungry of the four. Um, so again, I'd put the two. NFL cities at the top, but that don't mean that they should be left out, the other two. You know, St. Louis technically ain't a football city anymore, but, you know, they ain't been too long since they lost their team. So they're going to expand. They need to go to two cities that the AAF ain't at and that they, you know, didn't hit up last time. And I think Columbus and I think Portland would be the two ways to go. So thank you. Uh, Merry Christmas. I know this is kind of a shorter episode. It was different. So I'm going to try something different, something hypothetical. Side of some I have, you know, history on, like the XFL 2001, like St. Louis, like the rules and everything. Um, it was a hard episode. I'm sorry. It's been a, it's been a long, long day with my in-laws. Um, so let me tell you what the next two episodes going to be about. The next episode is going to be about Tim Tebow, uh, since he's a rumored quarterback that's going to join the XFL. I don't know if he is or not. But I will get into why I think he would be a perfect fit for the XFL and why Vince would kind of gravitate towards him and get him to do XFL. And then the next episode, I'm going to be going over what I think XFL 2020 is going to look like, as in week one. What games would I schedule week one, hypothetically? So it's another one of those hypothetical episodes, kind of like this one was, of the expansion. Hopefully soon, beginning of January, coaches will get hired, um, and I'll be talking about that. Then be talking about team names. Talking about team names, then maybe episode ranking them, and uh, ranking the uniforms and everything. So there's going to be some good content coming out. Um... XFL ain't really giving me a lot to work with right now. Um, so I'm kind of doing videos like this, you know, I'm sorry, podcasts like this and the St. Louis ones. Again, thank you for the support. Merry Christmas to you and your family. I love each and every one of y'all. And uh, have a good night. And we're getting one, one day closer uh, to 2020.